welcome everyone. My name is Nidhi Chappelle. I'm excited to be here today and to be co-hosting this session with Kathleen. Welcome Kathleen. Thank you, Nidhi. It's great to have the opportunity to join our GTC audience virtually today. Like the emergence of the cloud, AI is the next wave of technology disruption. Our approach to AI positions us well to help customers accelerate innovation and efficiency with AI solutions. And with cloud infrastructure as the backbone powering AI's potential, I'm really excited to hear from leaders at NVIDIA and WAVE about our work on AI infrastructure. Oh, I cannot wait for those customers and partner discussions we have planned today. We also have some great announcements, and we'll be showing off the recently released Azure OpenAI service. But to start, let's talk about the market dynamics for AI today. AI is more pervasive. It is increasingly ubiquitous in everyday life, from personalized product recommendations to medical diagnosis. The latest AI models like GPT-4 now train on trillions of parameters. Advances in powerful computing and the cloud have accelerated the development of these models, allowing for faster, more efficient processing of vast amount of data. Nidhi, it's an exciting time, isn't it? The age of AI, it's really upon us. In a recent survey conducted by Deloitte, 94% of business leaders agreed AI is critical to success over the next five years. And we're already seeing Azure AI make a profound impact on many of the organizations we work with. For example, EY now has a new contract auditing service. Instead of manually annotating millions of pages of legal contracts, they use AI to process and extract the key information auditors need. And this is saving an average of 250,000 hours per client. Another one, Progressive Insurance, if you go on their website, you'll be greeted with an AI-powered chatbot capable of personalized, intelligent responses. This chatbot, it answers 200,000 questions per month, saving Progressive $10 million every year and enabling them to redeploy headcount to innovative customer service projects. Another great example is how CarMax used the Azure OpenAI service to generate car buying content at a massive scale. But rather than me telling you the story, let's hear it from them. Car buying is a big decision. It's the second largest thing a person will do after buying a home. CarMax disrupted the industry by bringing honesty and transparency. We have tens of thousands of cars on our website or through our app. And without talking to a human being, customers can get overwhelmed. The challenge that we had was that we only could create so much content. There's manual effort, there's research, the writing, there's the proofreading. Our writers can only produce so much content a month. Would have taken them years to produce enough pages to be relevant. Azure OpenAI service allows us to summarize all of the custom reviews and put it in a, a simple to read and understandable sentence. We're able to take content and feedback from a lot of other customers, curate it, and create this very tailored content for a specific car. Through the fine tuning process, we're at 80% of the content goes through without a human needing to be involved. We're estimating an individual would take 11 years to do what OpenAI service has done in days. We have seen a significant increase in our search engine optimization. Now, the editorial team, they're able to focus their time on the areas most beneficial to the company and to our customers. There's so much possibility with OpenAI service. We're innovating at a scale, at a pace like never before. It's going to change everything we do. This impact is amazing to see. As business leaders continue to dive into the why of AI, we have seen a massive increase in discussions on the how and advancements in infrastructure, especially optimized for AI workloads, is at the foundation of this revolution. In fact, that's why we are so excited to announce Azure's most powerful and scalable VMs yet. Microsoft is introducing the ND V5 series, which is based on Hopper GPUs. This will allow customers to scale models and can scale from eight to thousands of Hopper GPUs interconnected on a single fabric backed by InfiniBand networking. 
customers will see significant performance improvement on their OAI models over our last generation of ND series that was based on A100 architecture. With the introduction of these VMs, there is going to be groundbreaking research for generative AI applications, both for training as well as for inference. And for organizations like Inflection, NVIDIA themselves, OpenAI, and even our own internal customers, we see a lot of our customers committing to large-scale deployments and bringing new models to market faster. All of these innovations and the customer examples mentioned earlier are possible with the breakthrough performance of infrastructure that is really tuned for AI workload. Kathleen, would you like to share more about how Microsoft is helping customers and supporting their AI needs? I'd love to. We're empowering our customers to use AI to drive transformation in two ways. First, we're building AI into every Microsoft Cloud solution to increase productivity of everyone in every organization. This approach is highlighted by the launch of the new Bing service with ChatGBT. But that's just the beginning. For all the developers with us today, you'll benefit from GitHub Copilot, an AI pair programmer that is increasing the productivity of millions of developers by suggesting code in real time, helping them write code up to 55% faster. For those of you like me, whose most critical work is done in meetings, Teams now has an intelligent meeting recap feature that automatically generates notes and actions and calls out important moments in the timeline of the meeting. Second, we're delivering the tools and services you need to build your own intelligent applications that inherently use insights from data and embed AI to create differentiated experiences. With Azure's leading cloud AI supercomputing infrastructure, end-to-end -end machine learning capabilities, and tools for secure and responsible use of AI, you can build, train, and deploy some of the world's most demanding AI models with confidence. We know that AI compute requirements are expected to grow 10 to 50 times what they are today as AI capabilities become even more sophisticated. You can meet the demands of large-scale model training by leveraging Azure's purpose-built AI infrastructure that is tuned for performance, so you can get the highest levels of speed and scale in the cloud. While performance and scale is essential, building, training, and bringing AI models into production can be incredibly complex without the right tools. To simplify the process, our AI infrastructure is optimized to work with Azure Machine Learning and open source solutions like PyTorch to deliver a seamless and automated experience across the machine learning lifecycle from data preparation to model management. And of course, security and trust are paramount. So we've built in data governance with the broadest compliance capabilities and combine that with industry leading security controls to help you prioritize security across the entire AI lifecycle. But as AI is poised to transform our lives, we also need to define new rules and practices for how this technology is used. This is where our responsible AI framework and tools within Azure AI services, like dashboards and templates, give you the engineering systems to build responsible AI into your own AI models. Azure provides all of that, along with the consistency and familiar toolchain for data scientists. Nitty, I know many of the developers, researchers, and data scientists here with us today want to know more about what's under the hood. Can you share some of the core product highlights of our AI infrastructure? Of course, Kathleen. We have customers like OpenAI, Wave, and Inflection that need performance at scale. Compute demand for AI training is expected to go 10 to 50 times. Now, these large models that we train today train on billions to trillions of parameters and will continue to evolve, often requiring longer training on massive data sets, along with using a mixture of experts. This high-end training is very sensitive to performance at large scale, with a single job synchronously running across thousands of GPU. 
This is true for Microsoft AI initiatives as well. We have a vision to embed AI in all of our products, and we want to leverage the best infrastructure for these AI workloads. When it comes to our infrastructure, we understand that building a full AI-optimized solution stack is impractical for most customers. And there are a few offerings in the marketplace for customers to choose from. To help you achieve your AI computing goals, we have architected Azure AI infrastructure combined with our overall AI solution to address these challenges for customers of all sizes. Our design philosophy is to provide the optimal AI infrastructure, configuration of the next generation, CPU compute, GPU, and storage, all from NVIDIA, all interconnected with the NVIDIA Mellanox InfiniBand to allow unprecedented scale in cloud, surrounded by first-in-class AI platform services. Additionally, we're the only provider to offer this infrastructure stack allowing customers to pay for only what they need. Our focus is delivering the best performance and scale, but also on providing you choice at any scale. We do this by offering multiple Azure VM series and SKUs configurations for middle tier to small scale AI workloads, even allowing you to deploy virtual machines using one eighth of a GPU. We mentioned the NDV5 Hopper announcement earlier in the session. I'm extremely excited about the performance benefits of NDV5, both for large-scale training and inference. Customers can register their interest in preview today, and we expect general availability coming soon. To learn more, please register for Matt Vegas's deep dive session on demand. Let's talk about Azure Confidential Virtual Machines for GPU workloads. These VMs offer hardware-based security enhancements to better protect your AI models and data in use. We are excited to bring this capability to the latest NVIDIA GPUs, the Hopper series. In the context of AI, this capability is critical given the importance of the models as well as the data that they are running on. We also just announced the Azure Managed Luster, which is in public preview now. With Azure Managed Lusters, Azure offers a scalable, powerful, cost-effective, high-performance storage for your most demanding AI and HPC workloads. And of course, many of these advancements have been made possible with our deep collaboration and partnership with NVIDIA. Interestingly, Kathleen, as you know, NVIDIA is both a customer and a partner for Azure. You're absolutely right, Nidhi. To unpack this further, I want to welcome Manyavir Das, Vice President of Enterprise Compute at NVIDIA. Thank you, Kathleen. You know, I'm here as a guest from NVIDIA in your session, but of course, you and Microsoft are here at NVIDIA GTC, and you're a diamond sponsor, so thank you for being here. Of course, we're so happy to be here. Manyavir, Microsoft and NVIDIA have had a close partnership for some time now. What do you think are some of the most important elements from the partnership contributing to the success of customers in the context of AI? Yeah, you know, uh, Kathleen, we've had a great partnership for, for many years now. Uh, at its core, NVIDIA is the company of accelerated computing. We make things go faster, whether it's AI or data science or data processing. And the question is, how do you put that in the hands of customers? And more and more, customers have gravitated to Azure your cloud computing platform. So the partnership has been all about how do we take this new accelerated computing model and place it into Azure, uh, the cloud that all these companies are choosing to do their work at. And this is not an easy thing to do because it requires deep integration between the stack that you have and the stack that we have with accelerated computing. And so the partnership has really been about integrating our hardware and software properly into Azure so that it's available to all these companies. And in that way, we can democratize AI, right? Because everybody can have access to this. Those are great insights, Manu Veer. Increasing access to AI technologies is a goal that I'm particularly excited about. Combining the versatility and economics of the cloud, we now see organizations of all sizes able to take advantage of infrastructure that is built with purpose. I believe this will become increasingly important as investments for AI ramp up, specifically with smaller AI innovators and startups who are being funded. 
cloud-based AI is critical for them to move fast. We're working closely to bring the NVIDIA AI Enterprise Suite to yeah, Azure customers. Sure. Do you want to talk more about the benefit for customers of running this on Azure? Yeah, absolutely, Kathleen. You know, it's you can think of customers at three points on the scale. You know, on the one hand, there's somebody who's just starting off playing around. They need to do a little bit of data science and maybe one GPU. And there's a number of ways for them to do that pretty easily. Then there's the customers who are doing giant scale AI and they have large engineering teams. And for them, it's just give me access to the infrastructure and get out of my way. But the interesting uh, point is all the people in the middle, all the enterprise companies who need enough scale in the AI work that uh, these simple turnkey solutions don't quite work, and they don't have a large engineering team to get everything done themselves. And so they're looking for all the right software platform that they can use to actually operationalize AI. That is what NVIDIA AI Enterprise is. NVIDIA spent a lot of time building up all the software for AI use cases. We've packaged it all up into this one piece of software. It's called NVIDIA AI Enterprise. And we're very excited that this software is now available for people to use on Azure in a very seamless manner, right? So they access the infrastructure, they get the software, and they're off and running with their use cases. Wow, that sounds really exciting. Yeah. So Manuvir, it's been absolutely great having you join our session today. I'm going to pass it over to Nidhi to talk more about that product collaboration. Absolutely, thank you. Both of our companies, Microsoft and NVIDIA, have a shared vision to make AI ubiquitous. Now, we know that to make that happen, we have to make AI available at different scales and really meet our customers where they are. To do this, you know, we are working on the best VM architecture supported by the best networking and the storage solution for AI. Yeah, you know, Nidhi, this is so important because these GPUs that we build for accelerated computing, they're very powerful, right? And unless you put them in the right architecture with the right networking, storage, all of that, you've basically got a car with a really big engine in it, but without everything else in the transmission, et cetera, to really make it fly, right? And this has required a really deep engineering collaboration between your team and ours to put this architecture together, right? And so very excited about that. Yeah, and as you know, we announced Hopper today, right? We are excited to see how Hopper will accelerate all of our customers. Absolutely, you know, Hopper is so much more powerful than just our previous generation of GPUs that if the collaboration had been just take the new GPU and drop it into the architecture you already had, it would not serve the purpose. And so we've actually worked very closely together to update the entire architecture to uh, absorb these new GPUs. This is where we have customers that are using GPUs for different type of workloads. You know, we have customers that are doing large language model training and need supercomputing powers. Then we have customers that are doing language models that are much smaller or are inferencing all over the place. And we, for this, we need a diverse portfolio that we have jointly worked together to bring to the market. Yeah, that's, that's another uh, really important point, Nidhi, because on the one hand, you need these different processors in the portfolio, like you said, big GPUs, small GPUs, but it's all one programming architecture from NVIDIA. And so what we've been able to do together, again, is you've embraced the portfolio, made all of these GPUs available, and for the developer community, it's the same programming model to access all of this stuff, whether they're doing training or inference, and so it opens up all kinds of use cases, right? Now, Manu, you're not here just as a partner. That's right. You've also announced that NVIDIA is actually a customer of Azure. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that is going? Yeah, you know, it's such a natural thing because if you think about it, uh, both our companies actually ourselves do AI at very large scale, right? And we've worked with you for years on standing up these supercomputers in Azure that you've been using, right, for your use cases. We've co-engineered close, so closely that we watched you use this every day. And so who would know better than us? that this is awesome infrastructure for AI at scale. And so, of course, we should use it too. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your confidence in Azure. And our goal is really to bring all of that engineering that we are doing with you to make it available for all of our customers. Yeah, let's democratize AI today. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Now, I'm extremely pleased to welcome Alex Kendo. Alex is the CEO of Wave. Alex, welcome to this show. Can you tell our audience a little bit about Wave? Well, it's clear to me that artificial intelligence is completely changing the world, and we've seen so many advancements in the world of internet and software. But at Wave, 
we're really passionate about bringing AI into the physical world. And we're starting with autonomous driving. Autonomous, uh, autonomous driving is going to give us the opportunity to provide safe, sustainable and accessible transportation for people around the world. Uh, it's going to fundamentally change the way we move people and goods around cities. But in order to realize the promise of autonomous driving, we need to have an AI system which has the intelligence to make safe and robust decisions in the you know, complex urban environments we drive in. So that's exactly what we're building at Wave. We're building an artificial intelligence system that can learn how to drive based on what it sees. It has the onboard intelligence to make decisions in real time without requiring a set of rules or maps that tell it how to drive. Uh, we're doing this by using the latest advances in machine learning and building really large scale end-to-end -end neural, end -end neural network uh, that can learn to drive the vehicle in a very general sense. Uh, we believe this is an approach that's going to bring autonomy to over 100 cities first. I love the mission of bringing AI to the physical world. Now, autonomous driving has a lot of sophisticated and complex challenges, and you've chosen the busy streets of London to solve these. Can you tell us a little bit more about the unique AI-centric approach WAVE has taken? There are a lot of similarities between autonomous driving and large language models. I mean, fundamentally, they are large, comp uh, high data, complex uh, decision-making problems. but. I, I think the the you know the, the fundamental similarity is that we believe that the best approach to solving both the, both of these problems is a large scale foundational neural network, a neural network that's trained using self supervised learning uh, that can you know, can really address very diverse sets of, of data. These this is how we're seeing these problems solved. But there are differences as well. Uh, I think. The first interesting one to say is the types of data that we need to focus on. While large language models are trained on you know, batches of kilobytes of text data, we have to deal with the scale of video data. Our vehicles collect terabytes a minute uh, from the cameras that we have around the vehicle or the radar. Uh, all of this data uh, uh, you know, uh, that our vehicles collect, we send to Azure, and we have to build um, a training infrastructure that allows us to train billion parameter neural networks on video data. It leverages many of the similar approaches to large language models, you know, self-supervised learning, generative modeling, uh, uh, all of these kind of technologies. But the video data puts a lot of stress on, uh, you know, on, the, on the, the bandwidth and the, the scale that we have to work with. That's where our partnership with Microsoft has been fantastic uh, because we've been working on supercomputing technologies that really make this possible, both from a software infrastructure perspective, uh, as well as creating the right um, data and compute nodes to be able to train at this level of scale. Uh, ultimately, it's uh, we're talking about uh, billions of parameters and transformer models that need to be trained on petabytes of video data. And this is a scale that, that autonomous driving hasn't seen yet, and we want to push the boundaries here. That was really insightful, Alex. Thank you for discussing the difference between large language models and how autonomous models are driving this. It is very clear that Ultimately, we are pushing the boundaries of how big our models can be. Today, we are talking about billions and trillions of parameters and also pushing the limit of the data that they are training on. You're already talking about terabytes of data being used to train these models. What does this all mean? What's, what do you see next for Wave? One thing I've learned right now is I wouldn't bet against AI. As of scale, the compute, and data of these models, the results we're seeing is just remarkable. Their ability to generalize to, to new scenarios, for example, you know, this is something that's absolutely crucial for autonomous driving. Uh, in autonomous driving, you never see the same scenario twice, whether it is different um, agents or pedestrians or cars in the scene or different weather conditions, uh, everything is constantly evolving. And the real challenge in autonomous driving is how do you take your experience and generalize it to new situations? How do you take those behaviors and apply them to, to novel things? That's what we've seen these large scale neural networks really excel at. And I think that's a fundamental enabler for autonomous driving and many applications of artificial intelligence. And we see these results only compound as we increase the scale of, of data and compute. And so, uh, I'm excited to see our partnership grow with Microsoft as we invest more in um, a compute infrastructure that makes training at the scale possible. And then on the data front, uh, as we see more and more vehicles, uh, more of our fleet partners' vehicles contribute experience to our fleet learning, 
uh, as we use new generative AI methods to be able to, to generate or re-simulate or, or um, create experiences uh, that we can train from, or by uh, scaling our simulation platform, which uh, operates in a, uh, you know, in a really adaptable way in Azure as well, that lets us both create synthetic training data, new experiences, train multi-agent reinforcement learning systems, uh, as well as um, validate that our system achieves the performance that we expect before we deploy it on public roads. Uh, I think these are, um, you know, these are tremendous forces that when brought together uh, will be what creates an autonomous driving solution that can scale to everyone everywhere. Our partnership with Azure has been fantastic for our business. There's been really three key things for us that have been most impactful. The first one is, is scale. As we've grown our business, Azure has been able to uh, adapt to our needs to scale and provide the elasticity as we grow. Second one is focus. Uh, this partnership has allowed us to focus on what's most important to our business, building the embodied intelligence technology that will power the future of autonomous vehicles. And working with a global um, leader in cloud technology has meant that we've had a platform to operate and have been able to focus on our core product. And then the third thing is about innovation, being able to stay on the bleeding edge. As new GPU technologies come out, we've been able to adopt them, which has allowed us to push the boundaries further and further for our machine learning. Even Azure ML has been brilliant for us because it's meant we haven't had to build teams of people working on this technology, but we've had a managed platform that's enabled our systems to train effectively and efficiently on Azure's cloud. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate all the efforts you have done to make autonomous driving safer, and we continue to partner to make sure we can provide you the infrastructure end-to-end -end so you can scale your solutions. Thank you so much for joining me, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'd like to invite my very good friend, John, to share more about our Azure AI services. Welcome, John. Thank you, Needy. I am thrilled to be here at GTC today to talk about Azure AI. You heard Needy, Manavir, and Kathleen talk about the impact AI has had on some customers, and I hope that they've started to spark some ideas. You've heard Needy talk about Azure's infrastructure. Now, I'm on the Azure AI team, and we build on that infrastructure. We build and operate our managed AI offerings, including the Azure OpenAI service, our cognitive services, and Azure Machine Learning. The cognitive services make it easy to add AI capabilities like speech transcription and video summarization and AI-powered search. The Azure OpenAI service is our Azure native implementation of OpenAI's powerful foundation models, including GPT, Codex, Dolly, and ChatGPT. And Azure Machine Learning is our Azure native MLOps platform capable of training, tuning, and running the most sophisticated ML models in the world. And since Azure AI services are all first-class Azure services, you can combine all these services with all the other Azure services and feel confident you're getting the most trusted enterprise-grade security, compliance, and regional promises that you expect from Azure. Now, Needy and Kathleen talked about some of the customers of our services like CarMax and Progressive. I'd add that Microsoft is also a customer of Azure AI. In fact, Microsoft is the largest customer of Azure AI. And the same services that we offer to our customers and partners also power Office, Teams, Bing, Xbox, Dynamics, and other Microsoft products. Our platform makes it easy for developers of all levels to leverage AI models and integrate them into their applications and services, regardless of their team's level of expertise in machine learning. Now, now that we've talked about what Azure AI can do, let's see it in action. I'd like to show you some demos of how you can use Azure AI to solve real-world problems. OpenAI's models are one of the hot topics right now, and ChatGPT in particular is getting a lot of attention from customers. What's most interesting about all those foundation models, including ChatGPT, is that they are amazing by themselves, but even better when you combine them with your own data. Most customers will do this through a technique called prompt engineering, or prompt stuffing. I'm going to show a short demo and example of how Azure OpenAI Service and Azure Cognitive Search can vastly improve knowledge mining over your organizational data using some simple integrations and some prompt engineering. Let's start by combining the Azure OpenAI Service and Azure Cognitive Search to create a chat GPT-like experience over some private data. Contoso Electronics is a fictitious company that wants to enable its employees to ask questions 
about the company internal policies and corporate benefits, as well as job descriptions and roles. We've indexed all of this information into Azure Cognitive Search, such as this document on the employee handbook, and this one, which is the Northwind Health Standard Plan, one of the many plans available to Contoso Electronics employees. And if we notice at the top of this document, it's a little over 100 pages, so there's a lot of information that we can use just in this one single document to ask questions. Let's give it a try. I'm going to go back to the chat application and ask what is included in my Northern Health Plus plan that is not in standard. What's happening now is ChatGPT and Azure Cognitive Search are interacting to construct search queries, retrieve candidate information from the knowledge base, and then generate a response. As you can see, the response not only answered the question based on content found in these documents, but it has included citations to that content to validate the accuracy of the information. See how when I click on an annotation, the app jumps right to the page of the document that goes into the comparison of the plans so that I can read more or do additional validation on the accuracy of the answer. Let's ask a follow-up question. Let's say I want to learn more about eye exams. Does my plan cover eye exams? Notice that in my question, I didn't specify what plan I have. Thanks to how we've constructed our app, we can pass context from previous parts of the chat into the prompt behind the scenes, which enables ChatGPT to answer the question and say, yes, Northwind Health Plus does cover eye exams for these particular categories. Click on the citation, and you'll see the part of the plan that covers eye exams. Now, earlier I mentioned prompt engineering. All of this demo is backed by a set of prompts that can be altered to allow you to solve different challenges. For example, I'm going to make a slight change to the prompt to ask OpenAI to take any question that is not asked in English and respond in the language it was asked in. I can just paste in a little meta prompt change and presto. In this override, what I'm saying is, if I ask a question in a different language behind the scenes, convert it to English to perform the search, and then the model will respond in the same language it was asked in. Now I'm going to take a question. Let me just paste this question in and ask it in Spanish. And this question is simply asking, how do the plans compare? So it's taking that question, detecting that it's in Spanish, converting it to English, executing it as though it was just doing it before, and then returning it back. However, you'll also notice that in this particular case, it actually responded back in Spanish. But if I click on the document, you'll notice that all of the information that it generated was originally in English. I didn't need any translation of the original content to be able to support multi-language. I just needed to make that simple change to the prompt. So hopefully this gives you some ideas about how you can use these technologies to build chat GPT-like experiences over your enterprise data. We're making this sample available so anyone can build this kind of application. Now language is starting to cross into all models, and we recently updated our Azure Vision service with a state-of-the-art Microsoft Vision model codenamed Florence. This model is one of the current generation of truly multimodal models, which means it understands not just images and video, but language as well. The new capabilities were released a couple of weeks back and offer out-of-the-box and customizable options to deliver state-of-the-art computer vision applications. Let me show you what Florence is capable of in the Azure Vision Studio, which makes it easy to get started even if you don't have an Azure account. I'll start by showing the video summary and frame locator. This experience demonstrates how customers can use the power of Florence to unlock insights on their own videos. I can summarize the video, and you can see the output in this paragraph of text that summarizes the entire 10-minute video, calling out the key moments. I can also search for specific moments within the video, and it will bring me to the exact frame. Notice that the key moments in the video are indicated by the pointers, taking me to the exact location in the video where the action is occurring, where I can click play. Finally, I can run frame analysis to get detailed descriptions on what's happening during any given frame in the video. Now, this Florence model is incredibly powerful out of the box, but it's even more powerful when you supply just a little bit of your own data. This is called few shot learning. I'll sign into the studio and I'll create a custom model to detect drones. So just select train a custom model. The first thing I need to do is to create some labeled data. Now, I'm using the Azure Machine Learning Data Labeling Experience to take a series of drones and select the object and then tag them as a drone. Once I'm finished with labeling, I'll come back to Vision Studio to start model training. 
I'll start the training process by giving the model a name, selecting an object detection model, providing the source data, and then selecting the smallest training budget given how small this model is. Now I can select the model that I've trained and test out the model on some drone pictures that were not in the training set. Even though this is a small model test, our new method of model customization built on Florence requires much less training data, and in many cases 10 times less data to achieve similar accuracy. Now finally, I want to show what we call dense captions. This is another new feature that gives descriptions of multiple areas of interest within an image. This is an image of a backyard barbecue. It's a great example, as there are several things happening. You can see how the model outputs specific descriptions of the person grilling, the girl in the background, and everything else that's happening in the image. This has been a quick overview of several of the new Florence-powered experiences ready to try out in Vision Studio today. And I want to encourage anyone who wants to get more details on any of these experiences to attend Adina's session. Now, these services, Azure OpenAI, Azure Cognitive Search, and Azure Vision are part of the whole Azure AI suite. But what if you want to build and run your own model? This is where Azure Machine Learning comes in. Azure ML is a managed end-to-end -end ML platform that empowers data scientists and machine learning engineers to collaborate, build, deploy, and manage high-quality models faster and with confidence. In fact, Azure OpenAI is built on top of Azure ML. With Azure ML, you can natively integrate with our AI infrastructure across Azure's comprehensive portfolio of VMs, from cost-efficient CPUs to the latest NVIDIA GPUs. This enables cloud-scale training for deep learning and reduces the complexity of bringing large AI models into production. One thing I'm particularly excited about is that Azure ML will soon support the NDV5H100, the latest VM from Azure. This will enable our customers to accelerate their deep learning training workloads and take their AI to new heights. One of the questions I get from customers most frequently is around responsible AI. Azure ML is our primary platform that brings together our responsible AI tools, including FairLearn, InterpretML, and our Error Analysis Toolkit. Azure ML's Responsible AI Dashboard integrates these tools to make it easier for our customers to identify fairness issues, mitigate biases, and ensure that even the largest models are explainable. As an industry leader, Microsoft is committed to putting these principles into practice across the company and deploying AI that will have a positive impact on society, and Azure ML is a key part of that. Now, back to you, Needy. Thank you, John. It's amazing to see these innovations across Azure. I want to thank our audience today and all of our guest speakers. From world-class infrastructure performance to meet AI compute requirements, to optimizing for seamless operation of AI solutions, to the importance of security, trust, and the responsible use of AI, we believe that Azure's leading cloud AI supercomputing infrastructure will empower you to build the world's most demanding AI workloads with confidence. The advancements in AI currently taking place are truly remarkable. Microsoft has a history of pioneering supercomputing capabilities in the cloud, which can enable businesses of all sizes to unlock the full potential of AI. Through our collaboration with NVIDIA, we remain steadfast in our commitment to driving progress in this field. An excellent example of this is the release of our flagship NDV5 series with Hopper GPUs. We hope you enjoy the rest of DTC. We look forward to seeing you at other Microsoft and NVIDIA sessions. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>